In this episode, I am hooking up our EcoSmart 36 kilowatt hot water heater. Eventually this will provide hot water on demand for this half of the house. But for now I just want some warm water for making stucco this winter. I didn't film the first part where I mounted the box to the wall, but that was just four Tapcon screws. The time lapse for running most of these 8 gauge wires was lost, so we pick up at this point where I'm running the last wire. This unit actually requires four 40 amp double pole breakers. The first three are already installed, and here's the fourth, and you can see the black wire is already attached. Let's just attach the red wire. In the unit, the red and black wires will add to give us 240 volts on each 40 amp circuit. My little wire stripper doesn't have a notch for stripping 8 gauge wires, so I lightly score around the sheathing and pull it off. Normally I would use a fishing tool to pull the wires through conduit, but these 8 gauge wires are stiff enough that I can just push them through this short section of ENT conduit. Then I loosen the screw on the breaker, insert the wire, and tighten it up. These QO breakers just click right into the panel. Now all four breakers are wired in on this end. Each one will power one heating element on my four element unit. If I had the 27 kilowatt unit, I would only need three of these. If I had the 18 kilowatt unit, I'd only need two, etc. It looks like it would be a pig for electricity, but keep in mind that it only takes what it needs on demand, which is why it's considered eco smart. It just needs all these amps at once to heat the water instantly. On the other end of this conduit, the wires are still loose and need to be hooked up. It's a pretty straightforward process to strip the ends and screw them into the clearly marked receptacles. The next step is to run water from the pressure tank. I guess it's time to scrape the stucco off the floor. This is just a temporary water run. Eventually I'll be putting in a filter and a water softener in the series. But for now, a direct 3 quarter inch PEX tube will work. I attach the incoming water to the right side of the unit. The tube is just red because that's what I had laying around. And then I attach the outgoing hot water line to the left side. For now this temporary hot water line runs up through the floor and into the bedrooms where we want to make stucco this winter. I ended up putting a garden hose fitting on the end of it. Okay, let's review. These are the power lines. They run through the conduit and over to the unit. This last one is the ground wire. I used a black wire with green tape just because I had bought a spool of black and I didn't want to also buy a spool of green. There are no neutrals required. This bracket attaches the conduit within 12 inches in order to meet code, and that ENT fitting is also securely connected. Then we turn on the panel. Pause. This reenactment isn't really my first time turning this on. Make sure that you run water through your system before you power your heating elements. You want the unit to be full of water when it powers up. You don't want the element to turn on even half a second before the water hits it, or it could burn out. Or at least it would reduce the life of the, uh, the heating elements. Uh, the order probably doesn't matter, but here I'm powering up the first circuit first. This one powers the control circuits along with that first element, then the second element, the third element, and the fourth. This readout right on the unit lets me see the temperature at the outlet. This is the goal of the machine, and the elements will all power up and try to meet it. The cold water comes from over here, so let's turn this on. I have the other end of the garden hose open, so water's flowing through. The little flow meter here detects this and turns on the elements with just enough power to get the outlet temp up to 84 Fahrenheit. Let's increase this up to 100 degrees. Then I head upstairs to the other end of the red PEX pipe. The first time I actually ran upstairs because it was pouring into the bedrooms, but now that's turned off, and we'll open it again. Depending on your video resolution, you might see steam in the bucket. It wasn't boiling, but it was cold outside. You know how it does that.
That's it. Now we can use hot water to stucco the inside of these bedrooms over the winter. That'll probably be the next video.